best businesses, best corporations, are those that are able to get a long-term commitment from the family and the best friends. Because those people are going to be there for the long haul. They will not simply go in and come out. See, most businesses spend a regular money on recruitment. I mean, take it in normal security business. If you're a security guard, you hate your job. It's boring. So you might come in for a little time, then leave right away. So they must spend money then recruit someone else. If, on the other hand, you hire someone and you keep them happy, they'll be very creative and very productive. And they won't even want to leave their job. And if that's the case, then you'll be able to pay them a fixed amount of money and the other additional benefits would be the stock that the company has and the culture that the company has. So there are a couple of companies that do this. One, as I already mentioned, is Google. Another is what we call SES. It's a software company. This is also Southwest Airlines. They're small enough and they're compact enough that they have been able to recruit people and generate the kind of culture that makes people thrive. They're learning organizations. Now, here's where we get to the most radical elements of what I'm saying. If you want to have your friends and your family working with you, you should have a business that allows them to live in the same place. So, your business should operate in the same fashion as a school. You know, letting people live in dormitories or in apartments that you have set for them. You want to minimize your transportation costs by either helping to pay for their transportation or by helping to eliminate it, by having them live on the campus. And then beyond that, you want to have um, cultural events that allow them to build teams, to, that allow them to build their relationships. So, those are, I think, the essential elements of getting wealthy. You will develop the intellectual capital at the beginning, You'll translate it into social capital, and once you combine the intellectual capital and social capital, you will build financial capital. You will be wealthy, because you'll have all of these different elements balanced. And that is where you get to the end point of all this. If you take care of your health, and you then take care of your edu education, you translate that into professional abilities, and you build community. And community is the ultimate of what Americans want these days. They want to have a place where they can raise their family in a safe environment, but also have good jobs nearby and recreational activities on top of that, and create their ideas with their peers. And if you can do that, that is a recipe for contentment in this country. I think that does it. A good example is um, Bill Gates. We had a situation where he, I heard he borrowed somebody's idea. I don't know if that's Well, true. that's specific to Bill Gates and Microsoft. Um, right. Yeah, that's an interesting story in and of itself, which I'll cover at a later point. Right, no problem. Um, I think we need to change the idea of what we consider to be business. Because we have grown accustomed to the notion of business as you alone providing service. What I think we are learning is that business is about interdependence and partnership, referring your customers to someone else to provide a similar business. And they, in turn, refer their customers to you. You help each other out. So if your employees are learning skills from you and they go off and start their own businesses, that's good for you. Because what will most likely happen is they will have some customer come to them and says, okay, I appreciate the service you're providing, but I also need this. You know, it might be slightly different. They can't provide it, but you can. Right. And so you share the marketplace. And this is why when you go to, to events, you know, sporting events, um, like NASCAR, baseball, soccer, you see a whole bunch of different people advertising in that event. Okay. And 
And that's what you should have. Social capital and financial capital are ways to create wealth in Canada. It is very difficult by yourself, because you simply don't have enough time, to reach every single person. You rely on referrals for most of your business. This is how law offices work. You know, you have a client maybe who you help get out of jail. They refer you to some other friend of theirs who has similar problems. This is how most businesses work. Yeah. Good idea. That's why they have um, like a lot of sponsors to get their name out there and stuff, right? Exactly. See, what we have been seduced to believe in this culture is that when you do something by yourself or as you originate something, you are the sole person to do it. You know, we, we celebrate the creators. We celebrate the people who invent things. That's not how this works. If you invent something, you're the first person to do it. But that does not mean that you are the sole person who could ever possibly do this. You need to get used to the idea that if something is needed, someone will do the supply. You know, if you need to have um, access to the internet, someone will do it. If you need to uh, have access to a certain church, someone will provide it. There are needs that are universal. All you're trying to do is either provide it yourself or find someone who can do it for you. So even if you are not providing a business by yourself, social capital, your network, is a mechanism for finding someone who can. So for instance, what you can do, um, even if you don't have your own business idea, you might have a friend who has a need, you might have another friend who has a plot, you put them together. And that way then, they keep going to you for other stuff. And that way you build your own social network. And your social network then turns into the type of operation that you can charge. So just in my case, I've already told you about my business ideas. Um, and just I'll just go over them briefly for the camera. Um, my business idea is to provide a service to high school and college students, especially those who are middle class, to go to students who are applying for college and graduate school and help save them time by being their agent, doing the research for the college or the graduate program and keeping track of all the deadlines, all the application requirements, recommendations, etc. And that way you allow them to focus on the core competency of being a student. Now, I've had friends of mine say, well look, this is an idea that you should not tell people about because it, this is your original idea. My attitude is, I want to tell as many people as possible because it's a needed service out there. I might be the first to provide it, but I'm sure it's being provided to some extent by other people out there. If I find someone else is doing what I'm doing, we'll form a partnership. The more people have working on the same problem, the better we are to provide the service. So that's how business should work. Unless you have a, a, a specific product or invention that will make you rich uh, and that only you can produce, what we're talking about is providing service. And anyone can provide services. So the other idea I have, of course, is uh, work with nonprofits to bring them to high schools and colleges to help give them access to a labor pool in these academic environments and to help the students in these environments to generate ideas about their own nonprofits and organizations. I'm already doing this. I've already brought many different nonprofit organizations to Lehman College. It's part of the Lehman College Political Club. I'll be bringing more. I've already brought nonprofits to other community colleges, you know, Hunter College. Them to Ingham City College. So I'm building these networks for free. But once those networks are built, I will then go to other nonprofits and say, look what I've already done. Look who I've already helped. I can do the same thing for you. Except if I want to do this, if you want to do this on a larger scale, I will require a small monthly fee for this. Since I already have the network, I'm offering a value to them that they would not otherwise get, that would induce them to pay me for the service. So this is the thing. You're trying to build a repertoire or an, an array of services that you can offer, and that repertoire is offered in turn by your colleagues and your family. So when I say share your skills, share your knowledge, I'm saying build a network, a learning network, that will help everyone to translate their skills into a market.
marketable and profitable job in career. That's it.